Hello, and welcome to the Casino Tears podcast. I'm one of your hosts, 10 Ton is number one, and joining me as my co-host is the one and only Ed Robinson from Roll to Win Craps. If you want more info on our show, please visit our page at casinotears.com. On this week's show, we discuss the Brown Water Bash, Hard Rock VIPs, Meetup in Biloxi. We also touch on Running a Team Table, Iceman, The Yuri, Spanish Moss, and a very special gift that humbled Ed. Ah, bringing back the sponsor, Tumbling Dice. They're not our sponsor yet. They better hurry up because we got some more coming. Man. I like it. I like it. I'm going to send that to them. We might, as well, we might as well just go for Woodford if they ain't going to do it. There's a lot of them. We'll just go run down the list, your top three. But I'm opening the court. Celebrate a successful brown water bash right now. What number? Three? Two. Number two. Oh, last year was the first one. Brown water bash. Yes. Season two. Season two was so, a success. Yeah. Tell me all about it, Ed. Tonight? You want to know about it tonight? I'm settled in for story time. I got... I got some I got some maple syrup lemon uh, drink and I'm ready. It's in the on off mug, one of the original prototypes. I'm ready. Maple syrup lemon. Yeah, it's got cayenne Is that pepper. Homemade? In it. No, no, no. I got it at Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Maybe we can get them as a sponsor because you buy all your shit there. Spent like eight thousand. It's like having a marker going in there. I'm telling you what, dude. Do they have Whole Foods in Alabama? I <laughs> know. I did see that water that you mentioned. By the way, what the hell was it called? And Whole Foods? Blue. I Googled it, though, because I wanted to see. I Google all the stuff that we have questions on on the show, like how to pronounce honk shell, which honk shell. which you're correct, but there is an English pronunciation, conch. I'm not English. Nope. So you're correct, man. Yeah. So what was the name of the water that you guys had in Alabama? You sent Brown me a water? picture. No, the regular water. Oh, it was but... blue. It was blue water. Gee, that's a... <laughs> creative name for the water hey let's well, call it blue well, it's better than perrier and where do you get that name from some french guy so you saw some blue water i googled it yeah i'm always curious i'm curious about where you're from it is definitely like a different country the country republic of alabama and the south i've yeah i've i'm so south happy too. though that this podcast represents that part of the world two-thirds of of the population it is a strong between the west and us yeah, it's a strong craps community, man. So, like, dude, come on. Let's, I'm dying to hear about this. All right. So, you want to know about Brown Water Bash? Give Biloxi, it to me, man. Yeah. Mississippi. So, when you go down there, dude, from, like, take it from the beginning, set this thing up. So, for people that are just joining it, what is it? What is the Brown Water Bash? Yeah. Uh, the Brown Water, it's, it's nothing more. It's very simple. It's just a meetup. You know, I've got a lot of people that watch the channel, a lot of people with, Casino Tears, watch the channel too. So we decided last year, I was just see if anybody wants to meet us up down in Biloxi, have a meet up, you know, and go play craps. Nothing, nothing really organized last year. This year, a little bit more organized, but not, we didn't really change the flavor because the flavor is we're going to be in Biloxi. Here's where I'm going to be. Here's where we're going to be at. So I got down there Thursday night, but we always plan a, a general meet up just kind of intro have a few drinks and that kind of thing on saturday afternoon mid-afternoon so that's that's the only organized really part of the whole process is just making sure we got a place to meet and have a few drinks shake hands take pictures that kind of stuff where was that that was at the hard rock we were at the hard rock casino in biloxi mississippi so how many people showed up 40 something uh yes uh, close to 50 wow that's strong yeah, you know, and you're skipping ahead from when I got there, but we had 42 in the room in in the in the VIP lounge. There was several that straggled in and out before that and after that, but didn't come to that particular meeting where we did a head count. So somewhere between 45 and 50 is my best guess. That's strong. Probably close to 50. But dude, we had we, we had people drive down from New York and New Jersey. Drive, man. How that is a long ass drive. I cannot imagine. I wouldn't I drive that far. I, I wouldn't drive that far to see a fiddle fart. But I have had to drive all through the country like that 
when I was on tour. I can't imagine doing that. And and Birdman drove down from Indiana, which is like yeah, he he drove down from northern Indiana. That's like we how had, many hours is that? Sixteen, eighteen, something like that. Uh, he probably was twelve. Jesus, dude, they drove that, that fucking far. I don't know if I'd drive that far to see you, Ed. <laughs> I mean, and I, I'm your, the co-host. I, I don't know. I don't think you I drive, drive that, that far, far to see me. <laughs> no fucking way. I can way. see you. I can yeah. see you on every Tuesday night. I know. <laughs> You'd be like, why am I going to do that? I mean, I'm kind of honored that they would drive that far for you, and I'm not even you. And well, they had craps licenses to pick up mm. and things like that, too. So, That's but, true. You know, I, I got down there Thursday. Okay. Because we had play, we had guys come in Wednesday. We had people show up on Wednesday. Sweet Lou was down there like, Sweet Lou Sweet came Lou, in. Sweet Lou, dude. Sweet, Sweet Lou, Lou got there about up. Tuesday. And we had guys oh, there Tuesday dude, night. the early bird. Justice Jen came in from uh, San Francisco. Man, on that is a, technically, does that take the uh, cake for the longest distance traveled? As far as I know, yeah. I mean, she flew, of course. She didn't yeah, well, she still, flew. that's... The longest drive is from New York. Man, Yeah, Ed. New York, New York, New Jersey. That was a long drive. You know, we had people from Texas. You know, and you think Texas is close, and but the Midwest, middle of Texas is not close. It's a no. long drive. It's just, it's as far. We had people driving from west side of Dallas and stuff. So, damn. That's as far as Birdman drove, basically. Probably, maybe even further. Man, Ed, I'm I'm honored, dude. I'm oh, honored. it's humble. It's it's very humbling. I mean, they bring you gifts. They bring you, you know, they bring me bourbon. I met my bootlegger. That ah, bootlegger was there. Oh yeah, of course he was. was. There. Did he back up a truck full of bourbon? Close. That's why I got that tumbling dice. I got. He brought me two bottles of that. He's a proper bootlegger. Yeah, I mean, most of it's pretty rare stuff. He brought down a couple of the uh, fans. They brought me some Woodward Reserve. Nice. I got into that down there. And then, you know, they wrote me a nice, nice note. That is nice, Ed. That's nice. Who were you with that Thursday night? That's like the early hunting crew. Gargoyle. Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Craps. Sweet Lou, I think, went. Justice Jen. That's a pretty good lineup, yeah. Didn't play long. Played one quick session, left. What's a quick session? Did it, everyone shoot once or did everyone get to shoot twice? What I think we shot it? about twice. We shot once or twice. I think I only shot once and said, I'm not playing this table anymore. And you felt my dice were digging and just kind of stopping. They weren't even going to the wall. I was like, I do not like the action at all on these tables. But Jen did have a night, ended up having a nice roll. I could watch her rolling for, you know, 20 minutes or so while I'm standing in line at the cage. But then a bunch of, they were having a con little convention thing. Some drunk guys came in there and got kind of rowdy and started pushing people around trying on, on the table and everybody just colored up and left. I like playing craps with people that are like just getting out of dinner from their convention. Oh, they could barely stand up, dude. They weren't out of dinner. They just they just fell out of the bar somewhere. Damn. Okay. My kind of people. <laughs> they were very rude. They were pushing Jen down down the rail and stuff. And it just it wasn't it wasn't cool. So we left. Friday. I played a lot, obviously, on Friday. Give me some highlights on Friday, man. A lot of us had dinner together on Friday night. Then we went straight to the crapless table that was opening up and marked our spots in the hunting blind. Nice. So that we could shoot some craps in different locations. Did a lot of dancing. Me and Justice Jen, I was a stick left one. She was a stick right one. We had a good band going right down, right down there next door to us. And every time somebody shoot me and her back up and boogie woogie, we do a little <laughs> dancing. I think I sent you a video of me doing just a quick move. Yeah, out. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to stop and go back to the table. If you noticed, I was like, okay, okay, he made a call. We got to go back. It went good. I don't know that we had any huge monster rolls. I mean, but it was only a $15 table. So you're able to bet extremes relatively cheap. Were you betting ex what, what your come out game on the crap list? How was it? What'd you do? I took a page out of the 10 ton book. What was it? You were working the extremes on the come out? I worked the extremes on the come out. Nice. Tough to tough to uh, resist that, isn't it? No, it's real. I don't I don't have I don't do it very often. <laughs> but I decided I want to try to be a show off. How did it go? Did you hit it? I any? threw a twelve. I threw a twelve. Nice. What set were you using? One four one two to hit that? Five four five six. Okay, nice. Fourteen foot table. I knew I'd get a little off, get get at least one of the dice would be off axis. Hoping that I could keep the right one on axis. When that hit, what did you do with that hit on the twelve? Press it. No, I didn't press it. I said, take it down. Let me have it. And I added some money to it and used it as odds. I didn't hit it again, but 
I look like a show off by hitting. Yeah, it nice. I like that. Yep. That's good. <laughs> Legend. You can't take yourself seriously when you're doing stuff like that. And you can't take yourself seriously when you're having these meetups. I mean, you know, you're going to hem and haul and back and forth with everybody just having a good time. And, you know, like, hold my bourbon. Let me show you how to come out on this game. <laughs> yeah, that's 97 out. <laughs> oh, my. You know, <laughs> Oops, so. give me that bourbon back. Don't spill it. It was all, everybody just kind of getting acquainted. I mean, we had dinner. We went and played. We, the crappers table was opening up. We went and marked out our spots. And let them count the bank and all that stuff. Had a good time. Just just kind of chilling and not over betting. I was, you know, just being cautious and just kind of getting to know each other and getting to know the tables. Some of these people you have never met in real life, Correct. Yeah, there was a lot I had never met. Now, there was a lot that came back from last year as well. Subscribers and viewers of the YouTube channel were there. Who drove in from New York, man? And what do you, does he have a handle? His name's Anthony. His name's Anthony. He didn't have a handle. Did he get a temporary license? Because he should have. He did get, I, I think he did get a temporary license. Okay, good. Everybody was putting in hours, dude. I mean, people, because people were trickling in. I mean, I had people coming in. They'd come up to you at the table. After, you know, you did shot or when the puck was off or when there was nothing going on and introduce themselves. Hey, I'm here for the brown water bash too. El Toro drove in from West Texas. Dude, El Toro, man. El Toro was in. Big money, Mike. Yeah, he's a friend of El Toro. Is he big? Nice guy. Like, is he a big dude? Just big money. Sarge came in from Texas. Okay. Um, Mark the Point from Savannah, Georgia came in. There was, he's from Savannah? Yeah. Savannah, dude. My aunt lives in Savannah. Really? Yeah. It looks like a pretty town. Oh. Dude, it's a freaking gorgeous town, old, old town. Yeah, dude, they have that stuff, that Spanish moss. That and that the stuff that hangs. It's not just the, in not that's not just in Savannah, by the it's way. It's not. It hangs. Where else is it? I thought just in Savannah. It's in Alabama. It's in it Georgia. Is? It's you in guys Florida, have that stuff it's in there. Mississippi. It's in Louisiana. Hell, it might be in Texas. I don't well, know. I feel like it got more popularized from like movies that show Savannah, and you see that like, that stuff that Spanish moss hangs off. Of well, yeah, you know, it just grows in trees. It just grows in trees. It doesn't have roots. It's just an airborne. It's almost really? like a parasite on a tree. Yeah, it doesn't have any roots or anything. So, Ed, you know what? With that, I think I, correct me if I'm wrong. The random tidbit of little factoid that I know about Spanish moss. Dude, didn't they used to use that as stuffing, like upholstery stuffing, right? And they used to stuff that into like mattresses and cushions and everything, but then they stopped because it had bugs in it. And then the bugs would come out. But that's what I think they did. I'm pretty sure at all. I ain't I'll, got a clue. I'm going to I mean, I can see this. that as a possibility back in the old days. Yeah. I can see that as a possibility, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I remember when I went to South Georgia as a kid, I brought back a sack full of that stuff and hung it up in the trees at the house. And it lived for years, but it doesn't like cold. It doesn't like cold temperature. And so ultimately it died from, you know, cold winters. Hey man, you just taught me something. Yeah, you just learned me. Dude, I had no I idea you. that that stuff just like lives without like. Yeah, it just lives in the air on a tree. Huh? It doesn't wow. have roots or nothing. I mean, it gets, it's like a parasite hanging in a tree, I guess. Man, yeah. Do birds make nests out of it? Seem like it'd be make a soft little nest with Spanish moss. You would moss. think they would want yeah. to, but it's yeah. not, it's, it's a little bit more brittle. It's kind of like dried grass in a way. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not soft, soft. You should send me some, Ed. I don't have any around here. It doesn't grow. It doesn't grow this far north. The winters kill it. All right. So Savannah, where else, uh, where else did people come in from? Oh, they come from, I mean, we had people from Kentucky, South Carolina. We had people from Florida, from Tampa, Florida. We had Oz was there from Tampa. Was Stemp Placer there from Tampa? Stemp Placer had the roll of the night on the crapless table, actually. Nice. He was throwing from the left hook and throwing 14 foot and oh, made man. a fine roll, fine, fine roll on that table. It's a lot of distance. And that's when me and Jen were dancing, I think. Sounds like they came from far and wide all over the U.S. Oh, we, well, you know, I mean, hell, Jeff's from Maryland. Snow Hill. East Shore, Maryland. Yeah, Snow Hill. Wayland came in. On Wayland, Saturday. did he bring his dad? Yes, he did. I played no way. Dad. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah. His dad showed up. Oh, nice, man. We had a hell of a good time. Let's say I'm trying to think. I threw from stick right one night and people were coming up to me going, Ed, you won't, you won't. I mean, the people on stick left, they said, Ed, you want to come down here? I'm like, no, y'all just stay where you're at. I'll just throw from over here at stick right. 
I had a really, really nice roll, probably 20 or so plus 25. Stick, right? I mean, I, 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 I do that on that particular table quite often because a lot of times stick left's taken anyway. So I was comfortable there. I practice from there a little bit. So I'm always comfortable with that shot. Your stick right shot. Where's your landing zone? I'm not throwing in. I'm not, I'm not throwing straight down. I'm throwing cross diagonally into the end of the turn. Okay. Next yep. to the dealer. Yep. yep. That's where I throw it too. It's comfortable getting over in, into a table and trying to throw, you know, leaning and twisting and contorting yourself. I'm too old for that. So mm. I just kind of line up and throw straight into the turn over there. Everyone was probably blocking properly oh we had no problem when you're with that kind of a group there, there's no chips in your way that is sweet dude you know you might have an accidental tourist in there or something but you're like a, you got a full offensive line just blocking for you dude i mean that's what you got when, when you can play as a group with established players and you got some shooters you got people that respect the game respect how you're trying to play and what you're trying to do because they're there to win some money i mean they're not standing there just you know play with ed they They'd like to win money more than they'd like to play with Ed. I think I would. I mean, I wouldn't want to play with me and lose. I'd rather play with me and win. So, you know, I mean, and any of the, in any of the other shooters that were there, well, I mean, we had a lot of people that were all well qualified to play. But, you know, most of them were just fans, I guess, and a lot of them didn't play. They just kind of blocked and enjoyed being on the table with uh, me and yeah. some of the other people that were there. Yeah. You know, Birdman, he and El Toro, they would – I think they went to some other casinos or something at one time. Yeah, scouting. Yeah. Saturday morning, boom, showtime. Saturday morning, I got up about 5 o'clock, and I was on the table about 6.30, and nobody was on it. Damn, what time you go to bed, dude? How many hours sleep you get when you do that? Like four, five? None. None. Uh, okay, you are ready then. You're mentally I was up. I did not. I did not sleep well down there at all. I was in bed, but I wasn't sleeping. Okay. I, mean, I was just laying there tossing. Were you just turning. thinking about hunting craps? I don't know. Just too much going on in my head, I guess. But I wasn't really thinking about craps. I was just like, couldn't couldn't get comfortable enough to go to sleep for some reason. I, you know, sometimes your mind just won't turn on. Put on our podcast, Ed. It'll put you to sleep next yeah. time. Try that. I'm telling you, I'll do that. <laughs> I will do that. <laughs> put that on. You'll be like. There was nobody on the table. And I was feeling really weird. You know, I'm on this diet. The all bourbon diet? That diet? Yeah, I mean, no carbs. There's no carbs in bourbon. But but I was a little shaky. I just felt shaky and jittery, you know, and I was like. Yeah, man, you're hot and craps with I just, I'm not feeling good at all. I'm feeling really weird. And I was, cocktail waitress came by, and after my first cup of coffee from her, she came back by, and I said, bring me some little bit of orange juice. And that was what I needed because it's 15 minutes after I drank that orange juice because I'm, I'm, I'm almost diabetic. You know, and I saw, I, th I think I was in a sugar crash and within 15 minutes, man, I was like perfect. Yeah. Nice. Feeling perfect. Stick and left one. I, yep. Okay. And so I made a few tosses, made a nice little run going. I was like, I like this. I feel good. I texted everybody, said I'm on the table by myself. I had a 20, 25, maybe even close to 30 roll or somewhere in that morning. Good I mean, morning. Was, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Good morning. Craps table. Everybody kind of showed up, kind of ended up taking over the whole table right about 30 minutes later. And we played for a couple, three hours on Saturday. I mean, Casino Tears was well represented down there. There was hats and T-shirts all over nice. the place down. Dealers and all them people were like, what the heck is that? And we'd tell them and they'd like, we'd like to go check it out. You said put it on when you have trouble sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't sleep, just listen to us. And then so we went, we went over to Harris. Somewhere around mid morning to go run over to Harris, and that was just because they had the ATS on a crapless table. Okay, uh, that was a disaster. Nobody could get a hand together at all. And there was no—you'd have some long rows, but there weren't any repeaters, especially on the outside extremes where you need them. Mm. You need repeaters, folks. And if you're not getting repeaters, get the hell off that table. So, but we probably played a little bit too long. What's a little too long at a table? And did you like? You know, you're buying to just get into some specifics, if you know, because I love those specifics. Okay, you're buying into a crap list. You still buying in for like six twenty? You're I bought in for like five hundred bucks. When is your cue to say, yeah, listen, this is not a good hunting spot? We've been one time around the table, and nobody's hit extreme more than twice. It's time to probably think about leaving because you're putting a lot of money on the table. Yeah, or you're ending up with a lot of. It depends on how you play. 
you're ending up with a lot of money on the table and you've got to get that back into your rack to continue. And if you can't do that, then you need to get off. Your Theo skyrockets at, at Crapless. That's what the, the, any host would love that. You get rated more. That's a fact. But I don't care about my theoretical. I just care about the chips in the rack. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. That's why Harris only opens that up first thing in the morning. Well, they don't give you a choice. In fact, it opened at nine o'clock and we were there waiting on it to open. That's a matter of now that I think about it. We were there Man, waiting. You guys on it to just open. degenerates, huh? <laughs> just there open this table. Well, we already know. <laughs> we I mean, you know, we've been we've been talking to the, you know, pit bosses and yep. this and that. And when does this table open? Well, it doesn't open at seven. It's gonna open at nine. So we make plans accordingly and be there at when you decide like, okay, this is not happening. You're not forcing it. Everyone's just in agreement. Like, okay, we're out of here. Even though you made the trip over to Harrah's. Okay. Here's what happens most of the time. I'm usually the first one off the table. In fact, I know I'm the first one off the table. If I haven't hit repeaters on my second toss, I'm gone. Okay. That's cool, man. And, and so I'd gone to the cage, got my cash and had gone and sat down by some slots, just waiting on them. And they, and eventually what they were doing, which is always what happens. I want to shoot one more time. I want to shoot one more time. I shot twice. I was the first one to shoot. So I was out. Everybody else wants to shoot again. And so it kind of, as it kind of goes around the table, people start fading away and going to the cage. I've been normally a three strike and I'm out. So you're just out. after two. I can just tell. I didn't want three strikes. I wanted, I was out. I was okay, done. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather like walk, walk away a small loser because I was not, nobody was doing anything. I mean, there was just nothing there. And then if I couldn't do it, I just felt like I needed to go. I didn't want to take up some spot somebody else might want. I didn't want to, you know, I just going to sit over there and watch. That's a pro move, man. That is a pro move. I will walk away quick on those tables. That's huge. Says the, says the man who was logged at 10 hours on Saturday. Yeah, Friday. well. I mean, at least you know when to stay. But two o'clock, we had that meetup there at the Hard Rock. Tell me about the meetup, man. Like I said, we had 42 people in in the VIP. Where is it? Is it everyone's meeting up in, in this room? Because I thought there was a room on Sunday, too, with a private table. Or are those two things very different? Very different. So we're in the we're in the VIP lounge or the nice, VIP dude. bar. Yeah, huh? that's that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, VIP. So we got bar. we got we got we got a private bartender or server, and those guys know me well. I mean, as soon as I walk in the door, they're pouring me a bullet. All right, cool. And then everyone starts trickling in. Oh, they ran out of bullet. They ran out of bullet because everybody wanted to be drinking bullet, and we ran out of bullet. I let I let colorblind kid have the last. CBK bullet. was there. CBK was there. Where would he drive uh, from? Somewhere out in the middle of Texas. Man. Okay, so everyone's in that room. That's you sent me pictures. Yeah, I loved it. I thought Macho Man Randy Savage was in there. I thought for like for a second. I thought <laughs> yeah, I was, like, that was Cajun. You? you're talking about Cajun craps, right? I do. I love that guy. He had a great T-shirt on. I anointed his wife as the official photographer to be sure and send me pictures because I didn't have time to take pictures. He I, was wearing a people, great shirt. I survived 30 years of marriage or something like that. I, that's yeah, what I remembered. Yeah. It was funny, man. I sent you a picture of my favorite gift I got there, correct? Little craps table? The little bitty craps table. That was made. It kind of it kind of made me tear up. Yeah, you okay. were getting gifts, dude. I know, but this gift was from an autistic boy. Um, this like a neighbor to one of the people who watched the po who who watched the channel and listened to the podcast. And he's got, he's got that super mathematical mind. He knows every payout. Yeah. You can put any, any denomination on any number and he can tell you immediately what the payout is. Doesn't matter what you throw out there. Yeah. Like rain mound, dude. Yeah, exactly. And so while they're practicing and playing and he's doing the bets for the guy that's, you know, that kind of thing, he would have my channel up on, on the TV, on the TV above the table. And lo and behold, that little boy made me a. I think he was like 15, 16 years old, I think, but made me uh, a miniature craps table. It actually holds a sleeve of, of dice. It's just long enough to set a sleeve of dice, Sweet. sleeve of dice inside. That, that was a very touching thing. I bet I got to put that picture up, man. We got to send that kid up. Got to get his handle. Does that kid have a handle? You find his handle, Ed. <laughs> we need to find a handle. Yeah. Give he needs him a license. He needs an honorary crafts license. I, I don't know if he's old enough to have a license, but we can give him a license that d isn't actually active. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think he needs one. I think that's a great, I sent it to Oz. 
Oz is the one that brought it to me from him. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, nice, yeah. Oz. We'll get that kid, find out some more info so we can issue him an honorary license. So, yeah, like during the meetup, I mean, I kind of skipped around, but during the meetup, man, we were handing out handing out all the licenses that you'd sent to me that for people that were going to be there that had bought licenses, et cetera. <laughs> and then I had the, had the, I little, temporary, I I had the little temporary paper. pad. Yeah, like an officer. Little, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, okay, and I just walk around, okay, what's your handle? And they're all like, um, you know, they give me a handle, and I'd get the date and when it expired and when they need to renew it and all that stuff. And Dude, I'm going to read some of these. Yeah, let's see them. Just rolling. That's just one of rolling. them. Yeah, just in one time. Of them. Just in time is funny. That's a funny Yeah, because his, his first name was, his name is Justin. I like that, man. And then there's old school. Yeah, old school is old school for sure, dude. And then there's Iceman. That's cool. And then I see this uh, Roll to Win Craps. That's really cool. This little, I guess you'd say it's like this little model, like this 3D sort of model that was It made. was a 3D printer. Nice. He, he, he designed it himself, did all the uh, mathematical calculations, width, all that, the height, all that stuff to make it perfect to scale. It's but cool, man. Hold. It's got these dice balanced on there. It's got roll to win, and yeah. it's got the green felt on it. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That is good, man. Maybe That's this kid's going to... a beautiful gonna... little piece. I've got it up there on the shelf where bourbon's supposed to be. There you go. Yeah, that's all you sent me. I don't know. Maybe there's too much bourbon, but that's, I'm sure there were more temporary license. If you got a temporary license, you got to send, I need more info to actually get I it. At... Almost a full, I mean, there was a bunch. There was a oh, bunch. Man. Issue. Is that all I sent you? Yeah, four, dude. Did you give one to Ice Queen? I did. Dude, I, then there's an ice man. There's a whole sort of family of ice people, man. Hey, there's ice, <laughs> ice queen and ice man, dude. Ice queen. Ice queen is ice queen used to be a dealer. Ah, okay. And and they would say every time she came up to the table to deal, ah, turn your bets off. The ice queen is here. And sure enough, at roll seven. Yeah, that's her number, man. She's got some. So she stays away from us when we're playing. Yeah, that's hey. She knows who she is. Yeah. But Iceman, Iceman was actually a that handle. That was a basketball player. Bet you don't know who it was. I don't, I don't think you liked basketball. Number forty-four, George Gervin, Iceman. He played on the San Antonio Spurs. Was his I think main team. I'm pretty sure. Iceman. I used to have a poster of him. When I was a kid on my wall, he was in a throne of like made out of ice. He was like on a toilet? No, like a real <laughs> throne, like Game of Thrones, sitting there made out of ice with two, two basketballs. The Iceman, George Gervin. All right. So anyway, there's another Iceman. All right. Was everyone just getting liquored up in this at the meet and greet? That was like, I, well, they run out, like I said, they run out of bullet. I went to Eagle Rare, which is a higher dollar bourbon. Judge three putt. Oh, Judge Three Putt was there. Judge Three Putt was there way early. In fact, him and Sweet Lou hooked up a night or two early because I sent them each other's info. I said, "Y'all are both down there. You might as well go hang out." That's nice, bringing the community together. Yeah, getting people to know each other. I mean, he's a retired police officer from up in the Northeast up there. Sweet Lou is. Yes. Sweet Lou and Judge Three Putt naturally should be friends. The judge, dude, you would not believe. We put we put we put Sweet Lou in charge of. Uh, the queue line around us on Sunday night, but that's another story. We'll you should have gave <laughs> Sweet Lou the temporary licenses to go and issue. Yeah, but I think as a cop, he would have been like used to issuing things, you know? I should have given him shit to hand out, right? Your name? I didn't think about that. Yeah. That would have been a great idea. That way yeah. I wouldn't have done it. Sweet Lou, we're going to have to, <laughs> yeah, use his skill set. Yeah, yeah, because he's used to writing citations. Yeah, you weren't, I didn't like your toss. We're going to issue you a, you were throwing out a little too Well, yeah, reckless. I mean, he, he, actually, he actually mentioned, you know, we ought to find some people who don't have craps licenses while we were there. He he, he said that while yeah. we were at a table. Look, dude, I got to tell you what now. I'm going to tell you this. This is the God's honest truth. Okay, I'm all ears. This, this is the God's honest truth. Okay. When those craps licenses came out and went to the table, the craps folded up like, wet toilet paper i mean they surrendered did the licenses have that those licenses freaking just just make those craps start biting fold up no but they just fold up and lay over and just die i mean nice. you just pick them up off the floor there's so many of them yeah i mean shit that, that the licenses were incredible i mean seriously every 
people are wearing those licenses at the table, either hanging around the neck. Some guys were putting them on their belt loop like they were wearing them, like, you know, like detective style. I love that I had the pins that I ordered those, that, those the pins. The pins were the most important piece, as far as I was concerned, because it keeps them from hanging down over the table. That's crazy, Ed, because th those were like the afterthought. Like I did, oh, I ordered those because I wear them like with the lanyard because when I went out with a couple guys with the licenses, it just looked like we were getting out of a convention. We could have been from like Chrysler. Take, I had the lanyard on, but I'd take mine and, and pin it to the top of my pocket. That's amazing. I like that the pins actually were utilized. Oh, the pins were utilized more than the lanyard. Oh. Yeah, proper license. Yeah, <laughs> proper hunting license, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we played for a long time Saturday night on that crapless, and then I went to the bar. So you were playing crapless again on Saturday then? Wow, okay. Why not? That's a tough, man, crapless is tough to get hours. I had a really, I had a really long roll. That's when I had a really, really long roll from stick right one, right out, the table right outside the oyster house. I had a really nice roll. Really. Nice. What do you call really nice? A lot of repeaters. 25 to 30. That is fucking awesome that's beyond really nice like no nah, everybody's got their own scale that's my scale that'd be really nice to bet on oh we made money dude don't worry about that i have never in my life seen so many and it wasn't just there but once those licenses were issued hard ways fours and tens everywhere mm. hard eights hard sixes been parlayed and then parlayed again and still hitting. Wow. I mean, it was insane. I have never, ever seen hard ways the way those came out. Who was lucky enough to be on the table then? Well, I mean, they weren't just happening. They were they were happening wherever the craps license was. Man, they would just bring them out, man. It's like... Uh, I mean, they, they would go to Harris and you'd get a note from Justice Jen that her and, you know... Uh, Ryan from Mark the Point, you know, Mark's hitting, you know, a hundred dollar parlay on a hard eight or a hard six or something. Sweet. I mean, it's just, you know, she's rolling. She started, she hit the ATS twice. And I mean, it's just like, <laughs> that is amazing. I, I That's mean, amazing. you know, and over at hard rock, I mean, hard ways I've never seen, I mean, just over by, by anybody, everybody was betting them. You had more prop action going on than, than like a Hawaiian video would have. Yeah. It was insane because, I mean, when I say parlay, I'm not talking about that stupid-ass $1 parlay into 10 I'm talking about a $10 parlay into 90 Parlay that sucker up into 100 and then yeah. hit it. I mean, they, they were – they weren't taking any meat off the table on the first hit. They were looking for, you know, plump craps to come in, waiting on them fat craps to come in. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then how are you at the end of a Saturday night? When did you decide to call it? So once you were there, you didn't leave Hard Rock again Saturday after that. No, I did not. I didn't. I never left it again. Oh, okay. People who have never been down there, they got to go check out other oh, places. Yeah. They're they're yeah. collecting chips here and there, and all of a sudden, you know, your phone would blow up with so and so just yeah. threw this big old hand like Jen, who just threw two. She threw two ATSs that night. That's incredible, isn't it, Ed? <laughs> to throw two ATSs in a night. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people that have. I would have made that. twelve thousand just on that if I was at the table with her. Just on that, those two. Just on the ATS. To, just, I know, just off of that. That's a minimum of what I would have But it was a crapless that. table, so you would have made a lot more. Probably, right? Man, she's a shooter, huh? Justice Jen. She has some talent. Justice Jen, you know. You I mean, and she, man, she, just a yeah. sharpshooter. Yeah, Jeez. she was, she has some good roles. Mark the Point had good roles. Jeff had great roles. Gargoyle had some freaking fantastic roles, and I didn't do too shabby. El Toro was bouncing around a lot. They went to different casinos, probably went to too many, because if you're not careful, you'll find yourself chasing. He knows this, but I mean, you know, you'll find yourself chasing instead of just camping out and waiting on the crap to come to you. Sometimes you just got to sit there and be patient, right, Ed? Yeah, you got like like Bo said. You Put your be, camo on. Gotta get your camo on, be patient, dude. Got to get in the blind, hide. What did Bo say? It takes patience. On a side note, I tried to play like Bo a lot this went last week. <laughs> Dude, yeah. <laughs> On a side note, I screwed it up a few times. What part did you try to play like him? Turn your bets off. Turn me off. Turn me off. Turn me off. How do you like doing that? There's times I always think about him when he's right. 
when Dude. when all of a sudden I lost like two thousand dollars in five rolls that were like four or less or three or less. It's a tough thing to do, man. Didn't work too good for I mean, it worked, but it didn't work. Uh, it was uh you turn your bets off and it hit your highest bet. Well, I, so if you're doing it on a crapless, man. I didn't do it on. I didn't turn off on a crapless. There were a few times on. There were two times. There was a few times, either Friday or Saturday, that somebody was having a long roll, and I'd see an ace deuce or a twelve or back to back. You know, some odd number like that, and then I would turn off. <laughs> Fuck that. Okay, I, I'll tell Bo. I would turn off. I'm not ever doing that. I'm sorry. I'm not ever doing I tried, that. I, and I, I tried. I tried. I turned around. I turned around to whoever was my left and said. We're going to play this one like Bo. I love Bo. I do. I do too. And But, but I ain't, I'm got, not doing I ain't that. got his intuition. I do not have his intuition. Yeah. And because I listened to today's podcast, I didn't do it correctly. I was supposed to bet the horns and the field when you turn your bets off. And I didn't do that. I never did that. That way you don't miss something, right? If it yeah. does. I just think that maybe waiting that first roll, it, it is in me. I did do that. I did do that a lot. How'd that work out for At you? times. Well, I waited sometimes two rows. Really? Well, I waited the come out row and waited the next row before I went in. Because that's classic boat, right? Mm-hmm. Or more. Yeah, depending on what's thrown. I mean, hell, but, you know, when, they, when they're hitting boxes, I'm like, fuck this, I'm getting in. A full-length extended version of this podcast is available exclusively on our Patreon page. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and will tell all of your fellow craps playing friends about it. Please follow Casino Tears on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your favorite podcast app. If you like the show, please rate it five stars and leave a review. The best and most fun way to contact us would be to call and leave a message on our official Casino Tears vent line, 229-NO7. You can also email us at no7 at casinotears.com. New episodes drop weekly every Tuesday. And lastly, to help support this podcast, you can visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash casinotears. On behalf of Roll to Win Craps from Alabama and 10 Ton is number one from Las Vegas, thanks for listening. <laughs>